Here are solutions to a pretty challenging chain rule, product rule, quotient rule problem. Um, I tried to color code, so I rewrote the question here, color coding it to try to really show all the different layers of the chain rule. Uh, so maybe when I walk you through it, that'll help a little bit. Also, yes, I realize that you could use implicit differentiation to make this a little bit easier if you happen to know that. In my class at this point, we have not learned that. Um, but keep that in mind for later on in the class when we learn implicit differentiation, maybe come back to this problem. Anyways, you're taking this derivative. It's a huge mess. However, we can start to kind of pick it apart. It's a bunch of stuff raised up to the 10th power. If it were just x raised up to the 10th power, I could figure out the derivative. I would say it's 10x to the 9th. It's not x raised up to the 10th power. It's all this raised up to the 10th power. So fine, my derivative is all that stuff raised up to the 9th. And what is that stuff? Well, I'll try my best to recopy it here. 10x to the 10th plus 10e to the x. And that whole thing is being raised up to the 1 10th power. And that is divided by x times 10 to the x. And that whole thing gets divided by another quotient. And this quotient is a bunch of stuff raised up to the 10th power, that stuff being 10 minus 10x over 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10 power minus 10. OK, so this right here in red is just peeling off this red layer. Still have a long way to go. However, we'll just keep chipping away. We'll get there eventually. The next thing to see when you're staring at this guy is, OK, I've taken care of the red. I need to take the derivative of everything inside here. Well, it's something in blue here divided by something else. When I'm taking the derivative of something divided by something else, I got to use the quotient rule. So when you're using the quotient rule, is going to be f prime, the derivative of the top here, times g, minus g prime, the derivative of the bottom, times f, all over g, the bottom, squared. So maybe I can set up some room for me to write all that stuff. Uh, f prime, that's going to be really long. So let's see, let's throw in some huge parentheses here f prime g minus, I don't know, maybe the minus should be roughly right here, g prime f, and then that whole thing gets divided by g, which is the bottom here, squared. I can write that in because I don't need any calculus for that. I'm just copying that I have 10 minus 10x divided by 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10 power minus 10, all up to the 10th power. Four more things I need f prime g minus g prime f. Uh, well, the g is easy, right? I can just fill in. This is g right here. I already wrote it once. I can write it again over here. I'm going to try to be clever about this and write it small so that there's room for f prime because I know how bad that's going to get. I got 10 minus 10x divided by 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10 power minus 10. F prime will go here. Maybe I'll even open up a spot for it. There's F prime. Times G minus G prime. Oh, that's going to be a mess too. Times F. Okay, well, F is just the top. I can write that over here. And again, strategically, I'm going to try to write it as small as I can so I have as much room as possible for G prime. Uh, F is all this stuff. So it's a quotient raised up to the 1 tenth power, that quotient being 10x to the 10th plus 10e to the x divided by x times 10 raised up to the x power. So what I got to do is fill in these two spots. If I could fill in those spots, I'd be done. Okay, guess this is, guess that kind of sounds like good news. So f prime, the derivative of the top here. Well, if it were just x raised up to the 1 tenth power, I could deal with it. I take that 1 tenth down in front and then I recopy everything, and I would raise it up to whatever one less than one tenth is. Turns out that's negative nine tenths. Uh, fortunately, it's not just x raised up to the one tenth, it's 10x to the tenth plus 10e to the x divided by x times 10 to the x. So what I do is I apply the chain rule. I take the derivative of the outer stuff here, and then I multiply that by the derivative of the inner stuff. So I still need the derivative of all this stuff in green right here. Well, I can do that, but it's another quotient rule. So I have another nested layer of quotient rule here. When I'm using the quotient rule, it's something minus something divided by something squared. 
Uh, that something being the denominator here, x times 10 to the x power. That's getting squared. And up here I'll have f prime g minus g prime f. Well, f, well, let's see, I can fill in g. It's x times 10 to the x power. Uh, I can fill in f. It is going to be hard to write. I can squeeze it in here. 10, x to the 10th, plus 10 e to the x. Guess I can't squeeze it in. I'll try that one more time. My hopes of getting this on one line are quickly being crushed. 10 x to the 10th power still didn't work. One more try. 10 x to the 10th power plus 10 e to the x. Fine. Okay, f prime goes here. Here's g. Let's make some room for f prime. Minus g prime goes here, and here's f. So I gotta fill in these two blocks. F prime is the derivative of the top here. Well, it's just a sum. That's good news. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Take the derivative of 10x to the 10th. You get 100x to the 9th power. Take the derivative of 10e to the x. It's just 10e to the x. Uh, so here is F prime in this quotient rule. Here is g minus g prime, this derivative right here. I think I finally have to give in and realize I can't write it here because this derivative right here will be a product rule. It's something times something. So the derivative of the first thing, well, maybe I could squeeze, no, I can't squeeze this in. Don't try. Um, I'll write it up here. I got the derivative of x is just one. Leave the 10 raised up to the x power alone. And from that, or to that, add the derivative of 10 to the x is 10 to the x times the natural log of 10 and multiply that by the x just left alone. This entire thing is what goes right here. This quotient rule gives me the derivative of what's inside the parentheses here. And that derivative along with this outer layer right here give me the derivative of this entire top part, which goes in this larger quotient rule as the f prime. Now all I have to do is figure out the g prime in this larger quotient rule. I have to figure out what is the derivative of this stuff right here. Well, much like I did over here, it's something raised up to the 10th power. If it were just x to the 10th power, it would be 10x to the 9th. It's not. It's 10 minus 10x divided by 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10. It's being raised up to the 10th power. So when I take the derivative, I use the power rule, bring the 10 down in front, subtract one from the exponent, leave all this stuff alone because I'm gonna have to use a chain rule. Chain rule is what I'll do to take the derivative that goes here. So I'll multiply all of this by the derivative of what's inside these blue parentheses. Something divided by something, and another quotient rule. Okay, I can deal with that. Quotient rule, I got f prime, the derivative of the top, that's just negative 10, times the bottom. The bottom is 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10 power minus 10. Minus, looks like I'm a little short on room again. Uh, I'm gonna need to take this somewhere else. The derivative of the bottom, is there any way I can squeeze this in? I guess there's not. Okay, that's all right. Um, Maybe I should do this whole quotient rule somewhere else. So what goes right here will be the derivative of all this stuff. It'll be the derivative of the stuff inside these blue parentheses. And to figure that out, I need a quotient rule. The derivative of the top is negative 10. Multiply that by the bottom. The bottom is 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10 power minus 10. From that, I want to subtract the derivative of the bottom here. Well, the derivative of the bottom, 10 raised up to, if it were 10 to the x power, my derivative would be 10 to the x natural log of 10. It's not 10 to the x, it's 10 to the 10x plus 10. So my derivative is 10 to the 10x plus 10 natural log of 10 times the derivative of 10x plus 10. That's another chain rule nested in there. Um, to color coordinate this thing, I'll put a times 10 right here to represent the derivative of what's in orange right here. 
Remember, this is all taking the derivative of the bottom here as part of a quotient rule. The derivative of the bottom here, well, it's the difference between two things, so I take the difference of the derivatives. Fortunately, the derivative of constant is just zero, so I can ignore this minus 10 right here. This mess is g prime in this quotient rule. Remember, in the quotient rule, g prime must be multiplied by f, so I want to take what I just found and multiply that by 10 minus 10x. Shouldn't be in orange for color coding purposes. I guess it should be in green. f prime times g minus g prime times f all divided by g, this denominator, 10 raised up to the 10x plus 10, minus 10 squared. This entire thing is what goes right here because this entire thing is the quotient rule that gave me the derivative of what's inside these blue parentheses. And that quotient rule, in addition to this chain rule, which was accounted for right here, gives me the derivative of this entire denominator, which is the derivative of the bottom of an even bigger quotient rule, so that's this entire parentheses, and that serves in this larger quotient rule to give me the derivative of everything inside the red parentheses, which still isn't the derivative, but taking into account this last layer of the chain rule, this stuff raised up to the 10th power, this stuff in red right here, I finally get my answer. This mess, thanks to the guy who caught this, uh, this entire thing in the blue here was supposed to be a quotient rule. And in the quotient rule, you divide by g squared. You divide by the denominator squared. So this denominator right here should have been squared down here in my derivative. What I'm saying is this whole thing should be squared. So this mess to the 10th power to the second power, which I can write um, as raised up to the 20th power. Using the fact that an exponent raised up to another exponent, you can just multiply them, you got that exponent rule. So the final derivative would actually be this mess where this is 20, or at least I think that's the final derivative.